So, we have an install an update for Edge uh, and what are we, what we are going to do for Lenny. And actually, I, I shouldn't really be standing here anymore as I resigned a couple of weeks ago from Debian. And we need a new release manager. So any volunteers to step up here and take over for this presentation? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why not? But it is a real issue, and I will be coming back to it later in the presentation, so. <laughs> I guess I'll do it myself this time. So, um, the main thing I think that we have achieved for Edge is uh, the graphical installer, uh, which has been worked on very, very hard by one guy, Attilio Fiandrotti, an Italian guy, who basically revived a project that had been dead for a couple of years, uh, did all the work by himself, and at some point it got good enough that other people got interested, and we said, okay, we will set up a build environment and integrate it in the, in the regular installer. And from that point on, people got more and more involved, more and more enthusiastic as the bugs got finished. And basically, a month before uh, the final release of Edge, we fixed the last few uh, crashes in the installer and stuff like that. And it was ready just in time. But I think that what we managed to release with Edge was really release quality. Uh, the main advantage of the graphical install is, of course, that we can now support a number of languages that we could not support otherwise, because they have scripts that you just cannot uh, render in a text display. There's also some usability improvements. The one that I like myself is that when you enter a password and a confirmation for a password, that you can enter both on the same screen, um, while at in the new front end, you have to enter one. Then you get a new screen with, again, one input box, and you have to enter the next. Uh, but with the graphical installer, there's still a lot of improvements possible, and I'll come back to that later. And we got rid of base config, which is mostly thanks to Joey Hess, um, which means that the installation takes place completely before the first reboot. And that also means that when you reboot, the system is really set up correctly, including stuff like the time zone and passwords, which gets rid of uh, a sec tiny security hole where, where in the f first reboot, you basically had a, a passwordless system, so anybody could uh, log in as root. So although that this may not seem like a huge issue, it is a real advantage. Uh, a few very nice improvements for, for partitioning, and I think the killer feature for Edge and uh, an advantage it, it really has competitive advantage over other distributions, distributions is that we support uh, setting up encrypted partitions out of the box uh, during installation, uh, basically by pressing three or four keys. And that's thanks to David Herdeman, and who is not a Debian developer, but has worked very, very hard on uh, this issue in Debian installer and on a few other partitioning related uh, things. And Max Fosler, who is the maintainer of the crypto packages in, in Debian. Colin Watson implemented uh, a feature, the rescue mode. Uh, that's something that could be extended uh, quite a bit still. Uh, it is modular, so you can add extra menu options. And f one thing we would like is, is to enable RAID and LVM and crypto if it's present uh, on the system by default instead of kind of having to switch to shell and back and do it manually. Automated installation, uh, and a fair number of improvements there as well. The one being the option to proceed a RAID configuration. Uh, some general co improvements like the fact that you can now uh, enter shortcuts instead of having to, to, to enter the full template name, you can now enter a short name to 
enable some features at the boot prompt. And Philip Hans implemented the hands-off installation method, which is a, a, a fairly complex uh, collection of scripts that allows you to precede an installation using classes. So you can say, I want a web server in German, for example, uh, which would be using two classes. But you could also say, I use the same web server class, but I will choose another localization. Uh, so that's that's really flexible. It takes a some time to, to get used to it, to understand how it's, how it's set up, but uh, it, had, it has great potential. And of course, Christian PA has been busy uh, trying to get people from all over the world to translate Debian again. You must be sick of those little uh, maps at the bottom uh, in the meantime, but well, they do show what's happening, so it's still worth it. Um, you can also see that I've split the new language into two groups, and the second group would not be possible without a graphical installer. Martin Michelmeyer has been tirelessly working on supporting uh, a number of new ARM sub-architectures. Uh, and as you all know, the NSLU to support is, is a really a great success. Uh, it has promoted ARM in the list of uh, Popcorn rankings from somewhere down the bottom to third, I think, at the moment, which is, uh, which is excellent. Because that is certainly where, where the future for Debian is uh, in, in part. There have been some other um, more general improvements we have switched to UTF-8 as default for all, all installations. We have had to do a lot of work to uh, support the new 2.6 kernels, which required UDEF and different initRD init generators, and to, to switch the installer to use that and support it properly was, was a lot of work during the edge development cycle. We have also gotten rid of the need of uh, what we did in SARS. We, we sometimes select uh, kernels, including the ABI revision, uh, which m meant that when there was an ABI update in stable due to security updates, we would also have to update the installer to be able to get those and not get, uh, uh, sorry, I can't find the kernel you want because it's not available anymore. And we've gotten rid of that, which makes the, the whole release process for point releases a bit more uh, simple. We also now install the source list using code names instead of each switch, so we use edge instead of stable, which makes for a much uh, more controlled upgrade experience for users. They do not get confronted with uh, a huge list of updates uh, as soon as an, a new release hits the mirrors, but instead they can choose their own time. And it also has some ad advantages during installation itself because you, you really have better control over what gets pulled in uh, both in UDEPs and, uh, and, and for the installed system. We also have support for secure opt, so the, the installation is basically as secure as uh, your installed system is. There is an option to install a system with a disabled root account and use sudo instead for um, administrative tasks. Uh, X3 now uses Resize iNode and their index by default, which means you can do online resizing and stuff like that. And we have support for installations using uh, PPP over Ethernet, which is a very common uh, broadband in some countries. And something that's not really DI but is still worth mentioning here is that we have got a, a new a new set of CD images, uh, thanks to Joey Hess again and uh, St 
Steve McIntyre, who is the Debian CD lead. Um, there are two multi arc CD images, which are basically the NetInst uh, CDs for three architectures put onto one CD, which is useful for people who have those architectures in, in, in one environment and have to run around installing them. Um, or just for people who want, just want to carry something in their back pocket all the time. Um, there's also, I don't know what that I is doing there, a multi-arc DVD for i386 AMD64 and PowerPC, which automatically selects the right architecture at boot time. Um, the main advantage of that one is that it also includes source, so it's very easy to distribute at, at fairs and so on, because you know you will be covered when it comes to GPL requirements, stuff like that. And there are two alternatives to the default GNOME desktop installation, the KDE and the X-Force CD, the X-Force CD for people who need a, or want a lighter desktop than KDE or GNOME. So that's basically what we've been doing for Edge. Are there any questions, remark, comments about that before we switch to like the plans for the future? Can you use the microphone, please? Hey. My name is Peter Reynolds, and I'm working on the uh, Debian EDU um, uh, custom Debian inst installation for um, Edge. And we ran into a small problem with the source um, architecture. Uh, it's missing all UDEPs and a few other packages. Have you actually verified that the uh, source included on the DVD is the complete source for all the binaries on the DVD? Sorry, could you repeat the last bit? Have I verified what? So I'm wondering, how do you verify? Have you have the uh, Debian installer, Debian CD uh, project uh, verify that the source included on the DVD is the complete source for all the binaries on the DVD? And um, if you have, what have we made wrong? Um, I think you should ask that uh, to Steve McIntyre, who has done the work. I haven't actually really looked at this myself. Um, I would expect that all sources for all packages are included on, on, the, on the DVD. Um, if you say that source for UDEPs are missing, yes, absolutely. Uh, I believe that immediately. Uh, especially for UDEPs that are included in the InnerTRD, I'm not sure if they would be included for UDEPs that are used during the installation. They might be included, they might not be, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, that could be uh, worth a bug report to, uh, to Steve, to Debian City. No more questions, I think, so let's continue with what we'd like to do for Lenny. And actually, we have loads of plans. Um, I've listed the main goals here of, on this sheet. There's a, a, a wiki page where we try to keep track of what we'd like to do, uh, which also has more extensive explanations and stuff. Our, our main task, basically, is just to keep up with Debian. Uh, there are so many changes which affect the installer. There are uh, library changes which mean ABI changes. Uh, there's also regularly uploads that break the installer in minor ways. Uh, at the moment we have an issue where the width of uh, Chinese characters and Japanese characters is, is not calculated correctly, which means the progress bar or the the, the, the scroll bars and, uh, and borders of, of dialogues are, are not displayed correctly. So there, there are lots of minor things that, that you have to keep track of just to be able to maintain the installer. Then we still have a, a fairly important issue, which is um, if uh, someone has multiple uh, hard disk controllers in their system, you run the risk that during a boot, the hard drive identification will be swapped, swapped around. And we need some kind of persisting, 
persistent naming scheme to, to do that, but that's fairly tricky to implement and we've kind of been dragging our heels to, to really get going on that. But we really should fix that for Lenny. Um, then we have a problem at the moment actually with all the work Christian has been doing. Uh, every language adds about five megabytes to, was it five? Uh, to the memory usage of the installer, which is a bit much. It means that you need bigger and bigger machines just to install uh, Debian, and we would really like to reduce that. And it is possible because there's some very obvious uh, waste of memory uh, in, in CDEPConf, but we would like to get people who are uh, really fluent in C to get involved in that. We need help with that. Then we, were still we, we are still using an Edge uh, DevFS naming scheme for some stuff, although it's been, uh, it's no longer supported in, in the kernel, uh, UDEF still has a compatibility layer which allowed us to kind of put this issue forward, but we, would, we should get rid of it now. Uh, because, well, it's obsolete, so why, why keep it around? And it, it will simplify a lot of code as well, because currently we support both naming schemes, like the, the, the real dev SDA uh, and dev ADA, HDA names and the dev disks, dev FS stuff. And it's crossed out because actually we've managed to um, achieve that during this dev camp. I realized that I kind of skipped uh, a slide, this one. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but this is a nice slide because this is actually a slide that Joey uh, presented during DEPCON 5 with the to-do list we had at that time. And as you can see, quite a bit of that had, has been realized in the meantime. Um, so back to what we are going to do. Um, another important thing we would like to do is uh, at the moment you can only install from the CD or the DVD you boot with. So the whole rest of the set you can only add to your uh, sources list after you've rebooted in the install, into the installed system. Which also means that when you're installing GNOME or something huge like that, you get only a, a, a subset of what is actually, uh, should actually be included because of the task definition. And it would be nice to be able to just swap the CDs during the installation and get the, 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 the full set of programs and, and packages that's available. IPv6, it, it was a release call for uh, Edge. We've not managed to uh, get it done for, uh, for the installer, but it would be very nice to, to be able to, to uh, support that. And this is again an issue where we need some help from people who are willing to hack on uh, net, net, net config and uh, BusyBox and probably other stuff and just keep going at it until it works. And a last and very controversial issue is support for uh, non-free firmware and drivers. I'm not actually sure if we're going to, to be able to, to do anything about that, um, because it will require a huge discussion first uh, about what's allowable and in what form it's allowable and what we can include in the default init RDs and what we cannot and why and so forth. So this is not going to happen uh, overnight. This is going to require some careful thought and, uh, and discussion. Some other goals, minor things. We're still using version two of the HP client, which is basically obsolete in the in the distribution, but we cannot switch to DHCP version three because it's just too damn big. So it, it, 
especially for floppy installations. We, we, we cannot fit it on, on the floppies where, where we would need it. So we would like to, to use a, a, sm a smaller uh, alternative like Pump or maybe the DHCP client that's included in, in Calypc. Uh, there are alternatives, but they have to be studied and uh, we have to test whether they support all the options we need and so on. Um, there's a new uh, package or new method to select keyboards and support the console. Uh, and for keyboard selection, it uses the XORG, uh, the same key maps as, as XORG does. So it would provide better consistency. That's called console setup. And uh, it would be great if we could replace console data and, and keyboard chooser in the installer with console setup. But again, that's a fairly complex task. And unfortunately, the people who have been working on console stuff in Debian are fairly inactive at the moment. Uh, fake ATA rate has been on wish list for a lot of people for some time. And I'm happy to say that's another thing that we managed to do, do during DebCamp. It's still very ugly, but at least it works now. So we can work, start from there and or work from there and, and improve it gradually. Uh, some new architectures. Well, there's not a complete list, obviously, because you never know what will turn up. And I suspect that Martin Mikkelmeyer will have a few more ARM uh, sub-architectures and installation methods that he's going to, uh, to be working on. But uh, these, these would be nice to have. Uh, especially MacBook. Uh, it's kind of supported at the moment, but it's never been done in a stru structured manner. It's, it kind of works because basically the, the, the old stuff for i386 works. Uh, and currently you cannot use uh, the 64-bit AMD64 uh, ARC on, on MacBook. That, that, still needs, uh, that still needs work. Uh, the same guy who worked on the graphical installer has been working on something, uh, something else, again completely solo. Uh, he's developed a web front end for the installer, which means that basically you you, you don't have to touch the uh, system to be installed at all, except insert CD, you boot it, and then you go to another system and you start a web browser and you install from the web browser, which would be a nice option. But that needs work, especially uh, some kind of authentication scheme so that not just anybody can log on to that web server and uh, do all kinds of strange stuff. We'd also like to extend accessibility uh, support for, uh, especially for blind people. Uh, we already have some of it. We have uh, also with Edge, to both in the graphical installer and in the new front end, um, special themes for uh, not blind people, but people with dis uh, visual problems like color blindness. And, and so we have larger font and, and more contrasting colors. But it would be nice to have, uh, and, and we have price support uh, in, in the installer, but it would be nice to extend it. There's, there's a lot of things that are possible. And the last one was something I picked up out of a, a, a video I saw of uh, LCA, the, the Linux Conference Australia. And well, if we have a volunteer to implement it, why not? As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, there's still a lot of issues that could be fixed for the graphical installer, and uh, a lot of them need, need some serious debugging skills and, and C coding skills. Uh, so, if anybody wants to dive into that, you're very, very welcome. Uh, there's a few stability in, uh, issues. Um, you can safely switch to uh, other virtual consoles at the moment, for example, to uh, work in a shell or to view the debug log, but not if the installer is running. Uh, for example, if, you, if, if net uh, configuration is started or apartment is started, while you're on another uh, console, uh, the graphical front end will crash. 
So it's, it's not a major usability issue because it only happens if the installer is active and most people will switch if, if, they're, if, if, if they want to uh, sort something out while it's uh, waiting for input and then it's no problem, but still it would be great to have that fixed. There are also various in issues with input handling. Uh, Touchpads are work, but are not uh, really configured optimally. Uh, speed and, and double tapping and stuff like that is, does not all work with all types of touchpads. Um, and there are problems with UTF-8 input, uh, so accented, accented characters and, and things like that. Um, and that's mostly a Directive B uh, issue in the Directive B library. It's not really... Uh, a Debian installer issue, but still, it does affect us. Uh, the encrypted partitioning option in, in the graphical installer is not complete. Uh, you currently cannot use random passwords, for example, for a swap partition. You can only use the, 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 the typed-in key phrases to encrypt partitions. Um, and that's because the installer has no way to generate enough entropy, and we need a plugin in the front end to, to be able to do that. For Nude, we have such a front end, but not yet for the graphical front end. Um, having a graphical installer and then still having to switch back to other consoles to see the logs and to get a shell is somewhat ridiculous. If you have a graphical environment, why not also have a graphical? Uh, or, or shells in, in separate windows in that graphical environment. So, it would be nice. A graphical partitioner. Um, people who have used it and are familiar with it uh, know that the Partman, the partitioner we use at the moment, is, is, is really powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You, uh, almost anything you would like to set up is, is possible. Um, but for a lot of users, it's not really intuitive, especially for, for, for newer users. So it would be nice to have uh, a, a simple graphical front end that you could use for partitioning something comparable to uh, Gparted, maybe. And actually, uh, a French guy, Xavier Oswald, has already started to port Gparted to C which is needed because we don't want C++ in uh, the installer environment. And, uh, but that work has stalled, so somebody needs to pick that up. And of course, we always want games in the installer. We have not yet been able to do that for the new environment and uh, for the graphical environment. Well, there just hasn't been time, but it has always been a silent goal of us to uh, have some some option to play a game while waiting for the base system to install, be installed. And of course, we basically only have support for i386 and AMD64 at the moment. PowerPC is experimentally supported, but uh, only for a limited number of systems. And uh, we know there are uh, issues on, on, on some of them. So some porting work for uh, PowerPC and for other, other architects would be, would be great. Uh, partitioning, it, it is a very versatile, versatile tool, but uh, it's also a tool that can be improved in a lot of, of ways. Um, there's a, the, the partitioner is basic, a huge amount of shell scripting, uh, very modular but that also makes it quite slow in some cases. And for example, uh, some core parts could be replaced by C code, which would speed up the process a lot. Uh, and as it is a huge amount of shell code, there are obviously places where the shell code is not optimal, where, where uh, error checks could be imp improved. Uh, and one of the things that could be improved is the way translations are, are currently being handled, uh, which is basically because there was no other option uh, to do it at the time, but we now have a different mechanism that can be used, uh, and we should switch to that, but that, uh, that's a fair amount of work.
Um, one option that's missing in the guided partitioning menu is the option to say, okay, I've got a Windows installation and I want to keep that. Please resize my Windows partition and install Debian in the space that comes, becomes free uh, through that. Um, Maddock has uh, suggested that we should implement support for RAID 10 and RAID 6. And he's even offered to work on it once he's done with NetConf, I guess. And as I say, there's plenty of other stuff that can be done uh, with regard to partitioning. So, the basic message that I wanted to give to all of you is that the installer, although it works and it's an excellent installation system for, for Debian, it needs quite a bit of maintenance. And the current team uh, basically is a bit on the small side to be able to maintain it properly and do all the new stuff that's, uh, that's possible and that, that we have listed. So we would like to get the general Debian community to get a bit more involved, uh, especially people who maintain packages that are used in the installer. It would be great if, if they would sometimes just look at how it is used and see if it's still optimal or if changes are possible that, that would uh, improve how it is used. Uh, maybe extra compilation op options that uh, reduce the size uh, disabling of features that are not used to reduce the size. It's, it's often fairly small things, but they are very important for us. Uh, but it's stuff that we cannot really do ourselves. And as I say, also just extra hands, uh, even helping processing installation reports, uh, testing regularly uh, fixing minor issues that annoy you when you use it. And that's another thing. I would like more DDs to use the installer because sometimes we hear, hey, this is the first time I've installed uh, a new system using DI. It's been available for three years, for God's sake. So if you're interested in getting involved, please come to the buff uh, on Friday. And that's basically what I had to say. So now, if there's any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, just a simple question. Um, who in this room did ever try to, I don't know, uh, see what was in the DI uh, subversion repository? and eventually hacked it? <laughs> okay. That's a fair number of people, but it could be a lot better. Because <laughs> like the Debian installer is basically shell scripts, uh, debconf, uh, things like every DD should know how about. So try it, try to do it. It's fairly easy, actually. Yes, that's true. It, it, it really is easy. Otherwise, I could never have in a DI hacker. Yeah, even the non-programmers, DD can do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's not exactly a question. Um, two things. I think uh, we have the duty and I will do it in name of a few people to owe some apologies to France for the, some lack of support we, um, we showed during the recent issues and uh, we failed to measure how it was affected by these events and for this I think we owe you an apology and second I think I want to, in name of the whole DI team, express my uh, 
respect for the whole work that France did during the release of uh, the Etch installer. And without France's work, we wouldn't have released such a, a good installer. So thank you, France. Thank you very much, Christian. Um, I'm not going into the whole thing here. Uh, I'm happy to talk about it to anybody who wants to discuss it privately, but uh, I don't think it's, it's really something that should be discussed publicly. Um, yes, it has been, as, as I wrote in my resignation mail, it has been fun, mostly. Um, the last year has been, has been quite stressful for me because this issue gets uh, dragging on and on and on. And it, it just reduced the amount of fun I had working f for Debian uh, to the point that, say, that I had to conclude, okay, this is not worth it. But I will be around. Uh, I still enjoy working on the installer and I, I will continue hacking on it. Um, but I won't be as, as involved as I, has been, as I have been over the past uh, two years or so. Steve? Follow-up question, why have you not named Christian as your successor? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid you haven't been reading the mailing list properly because he already sent a mail that he wasn't available, so... <laughs> <laughs> um. I, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about um, the Debian installer for very small system, in fact, because um, I own a computer that has uh, not a lot of memory at all, less than, uh, I think, uh, 16 megabytes, so uh, in RAM, in, uh, and it's uh, very complicated to install it. So I just want to know if uh, it's only a question of uh, uh, cdebconf and uh, unlink uh, languages, or if it's larger than that. Uh, if uh, you, uh, just uh, to, to say what uh, I did say, uh, it's because I, I think that dpkj, uh, when uh, installing package, also take a lot of memory. So uh, if there's, mm, if you need to fix cdebconf and also dpkj, it's uh, a huge task. Uh, so I just want to know if it's only a cdebconf issue or if it's more general. Um, it is. It is more general, and the problem starts with the kernel, uh, which has grown and grown and grown and grown uh, over the past years. Um, our current boot floppy for i386 basically only contains the kernel and we couldn't even fit USB modules on it so we cannot uh, support installation from USB floppy at the moment. Uh, that's something we cannot ch change, that's something that the Debian community has to work on. Um, we, we could probably fix some of it by using a, a custom compiled kernel for Debian installer uh, or for, for boot floppy, but that has other issues, um, like you could run into issues, new issues when you reboot the system because it was a different kernel when you were installing. So it's, it's unlikely that we are going the way. Keith, I just see you come in and I want to go back a bit in my presentation because Basically, this was my first slide. <laughs> okay, that's, 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 that's a good excuse. <laughs> um, but 16 MB, I, I, I think we won't be able to, to ever get down back to that level again. Um, what I said about CDEPConf is actually not uh, an issue so much for the really low memory installations because we already have mechanisms to uh, not load all translations, um, which reduce memory usage by, by a huge amount. It would make a small difference, but uh, not really significant. But yes, uh, 
any work to reduce memory on the installer is, is very useful. Uh, every 10K saved uh, will, will help us install all the system that have limited uh, amount of, of uh, memory. I think that for really small systems, you will have to uh, end up with, with something like just debootstrapping uh, manually. And of course, once you get to package installation, you have swap available uh, because you have your partitioning done at, in that stage. So it becomes less important, uh, although, yes, if you have to swap huge amounts of, of, of uh, memory out during package management, that's, that's not good. But again, that's not something we can fix in the inst installer. It's, it's uh, totally outside of the scope. Yeah, I have a uh, few comments on both your prospective list of features to uh, implement for Lenny. Uh, mostly shameless advertising for the talk I have today and uh, later next week. Um, first of all, hardware detection wasn't on your list. I believe we can do a lot better and I hope we can get it uh, installing uh, hardware specific packages automatically when you install it, like the uh, video card configuration tools for laptops and the RAID controller monitoring s systems for servers and that kind of thing. And I hope to attract, uh, attract more developers for that idea on uh, my talk um, uh, later next week. And also, I suspect we should uh, switch to a dependency-based boot system uh, to make sure that the boot sequence in Debian is really correct and not as it is at the moment, uh, fairly correct. That's your next call. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So. <coughs> the, fir the first issue is, is, is an inst install installation issue, and uh, I know you've been working on that. I know it's a pet issue of yours, and uh, if, if, if we get something working, we will, of course, uh, include it in, in the installer. Uh, I've replied to your initial proposal about that on the list, uh, where I think I said my main concern would be how do you build your database of... Uh, what hardware needs what and how do you make sure that you don't install stuff when it's not really needed because hardware looks similar during hardware detection but isn't really. Uh, but yes, definitely, it's, it's, a, it's a worthwhile uh, thing to, to work on and, and, and to implement. Uh, the second issue is uh, a general Debian issue and has nothing to do with the installer, I'm sorry to say. So you'll have to bang that drum somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, if there's no more questions, I'd like to thank you all for your attention and uh, see you all soon.